What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today I'm gonna to show you how I made this beautiful, smoky, barky, juicy, tender, delicious pastrami brisket. Give it up. When it comes to creativity in the barbecue world, the first thing most pitmasters seem to reach for is pastrami. If you already know how to trim, smoke, and slice a brisket, pastrami is a no-brainer. All you need to do is brine your meat, change up your rub a little bit, and you've got an amazing new special or menu item. But for me, I like to break down pastrami into three different categories. First off, you've got your New York deli style, your Katz's, where it is brined forever, then cold smoked and steamed before slicing for an amazing tall sandwich. Two would be your cold cut style, something you pick up at the grocery store that is chilled and then sliced very thin on a deli slicer. And three, you've got your Texas style pastrami where the brisket is cooked with that heavy bar, cooked to tenderness, but it's still brined and has that wonderful pastrami flavor. And I plan on covering all three styles in the future on this channel, but for today, we are gonna stick with the Texas style pastrami brisket and it is going to be delicious. First thing you're going to need is a brisket. What I've got here is a USDA Prime brisket that I picked up at my local HEB. And just like any other brisket, we gotta get this thing trimmed up. Starting as always with this deckle fat on the back. We're just gonna go ahead and take this right on out. Natural separation in there makes life real easy. While I'm on this back side, I'm gonna go through and take off some of this extra fat and silver skin, as well as this kind of sharp feathery edge here. We don't want that to burn up on us. Just making everything nice and clean, nice and rounded. You know the drill, folks. Take off some of this extra fat on this side while we're back here. Beautiful. And as you know, I have a whole video on trimming briskets that you can check out for more detail on what I'm doing here, but we're just giving it a pretty basic trim to make sure we have the right amount of fat, not too much, that it's not gonna render out, but enough that it stays nice and juicy. Whoops, that's not a problem. Chud scrape. That's looking pretty good. Now just for the overall shape of it. Beautiful. Dun, dun, dun. Looking good on the end here. Just enough fat. Shape is looking nice. Everything's clean. Everything's rounded. It's looking good to me. Good enough to make some pastrami. Got some pretty nice marbling in there too. So in order to turn this brisket into a pastrami, we need to make a brine. Starting with some yellow mustard seeds, some black peppercorns, and some coriander seeds. And we'll throw in our allspice as well. And we're just gonna lightly toast these to release their fragrance. They're ready to go. And to make sure nothing burns at this stage, we're gonna go in with some nice cold water. One quart going in. Then we're gonna go in with some salt, some brown sugar, pink curing salt, a couple of bay leaves, a couple of cinnamon sticks, some red chili flakes, some juniper berries, couple of cloves and some fresh garlic. Back on the heat and let all of those sugars and salts dissolve while blooming all of these wonderful flavors. And basically I just made my own pickling spice. So if you wanted to keep this real easy, all you really need is some salt, some sugar, some pink salt and some pickling spice that you can pick up at the grocery store and you got the makings for some good pastrami. And again, that's pink curing salt, not Himalayan salt. That's what gives it the nice red color and that wonderful cured flavor. After coming up to a simmer, all the salt and sugars have dissolved. We're gonna dump this into our container here. This is another three quarts of cold water and that should help bring our brine temperature down so we can get our brisket it in there. Oh, I also threw a knob of ginger in there that I had lying around. Just mixing this together, make sure everything's dissolved. And once it's cooled down a little bit, we will throw our brisket in. Now, typically a brisket this size is gonna take seven to 14 days to let that cure fully penetrate the meat. But I'm shooting this on a Monday and I plan on cooking this on a Friday. So I'm gonna cheat the system a little bit. Beep. Into the bath she goes. And again, you could totally leave this in here for a good seven days and get some really good results, but I don't have that kind of time. So what I'm gonna do is bust out this this candy dandy injector. That way I know for sure this brine is penetrating all the way into the meat. And if you were just doing a brisket flat or a smaller cut of meat, like a beef rib or something, you probably don't need to do this. But because I'm doing the full brisket and I'm gonna try and get this done in a few days, the injection is just gonna make sure that we have even curing all the way through. Several pokes later,
later, this thing is feeling fully injected, got a good amount of weight to it. So I'm gonna let this sit in this brine in my refrigerator for the next few days. Probably flip it here and there just to make sure everything is penetrating evenly. And I will see you when it's time to throw this on the smoker. Monday night, this bad Larry went into the brine. It is now Friday morning and she's coming out. Ooh, very nice. Feels incredibly heavy, which is a good sign. That means that brine has really penetrated this brisket, giving us all of that lovely flavor, and it should be cured and seasoned throughout. So now what I'm gonna do is give it a rinse in the sink, get all these extra berries off of there, and make sure there's no extra cure brine or salt on there, because all the salt and flavor we need is already in the meat. One thorough rinse later, and we are looking nice and clean. Smells really good. I'm just gonna go through and pat it dry. Looks like we got a little bit of a red spot right there. That's probably where it was sitting on the pan. I should have thrown a rack underneath it to get full brine coverage, but that's all right. So at this stage, you could throw this into a big pot of boiling water and get yourself some good old corned beef, which I was actually planning on doing for St. Patrick's Day, but I just can't find it in me to boil a brisket when I've got all these smokers around. So what we're gonna do now is throw a rub on this and smoke it to perfection, and we will be rewarded with some delicious pastrami. For our rub today on this pastrami, we're going in with two parts 16 mesh black pepper, two parts ground coriander, not too coarse, not too fine either. Trying to get the same size as the pepper. We're gonna go in with half a part of some mustard powder as well as some granulated garlic. Give that some tiny whiskey business. Double shout out, and we are gonna rub this thing down like we mean it. Anybody want a peanut? You could go through and put a slather on this if you wanted to, but it just came out of the brine. It's pretty tacky already. Oh yeah, smells so good. It's reinforcing some of those flavors in the brine already. But again, I want to get a nice brisket barky crust on this thing. So I'm going to go pretty heavy. And you can go as heavy as you want with this stuff because there's no salt in it. So there's really nothing to worry about. Don't forget your sides, folks. And that is looking just about perfect to me. Time to throw it on the pit. There's a snake in my Crocs. Coming up on 275 degrees, which is where we're gonna be rocking this here pastrami today. And again, we're gonna cook this just like any other brisket. So we're gonna go fat cap up, fatty side towards the fire, start working on that bark. I'm not gonna go with any water pans or anything like that today because this thing is fully brined. So I don't think we're gonna be needing any extra moisture. So with that being said, I'm gonna let this rock for the rest of the day. Big shout out to Chris from Lone Pint Brewery. He came by and picked up a Chud Pit 115 the other day and uh, brought me a whole bunch of these. Gotta love the Yellow Rose IPA. It's definitely one of my favorite beers in Texas. Thank you, Chris. Six hours later, let's see how this pastrami is looking. Ooh, got a beautiful bark on there, nice and crunchy, feeling pretty good. Ooh, yeah, nothing pooling up too bad. I think it's time to give it a wrap. When it comes to wrapping your pastrami, you can do pretty much whatever you like. A full foil wrap would work really well because it would help kind of steam the brisket while accelerating the cooking process. And that steam might actually help mimic the New York deli style of cooking where they'll steam it for a few hours to get it nice and juicy and tender. But because we're cooking it brisket style, a paper wrap would work just fine. But you know me, I gotta go with the foil boat. As you can see, we've got some beautiful bark on there. That coriander smells so good. But for the foil bow, you know the drill. We're just gonna go around and crinkle up all these edges. And the whole benefit of the foil boat is that we're gonna keep rendering all this top fat down and build a really good crunchy thick bark on there. While at the same time, we can kind of protect the lean edges and collect all the fat and juices. Which is gonna help cook this brisket from the bottom up, make sure that lean gets nice and tender. And if anything's looking a little crispy, we can always pull the foil around. And the beauty of it is you can keep an eye on it throughout the cook. You don't have to unwrap it to take a look at it. If it collects too much juice, you can pour it out. But for more on the boat method, be sure to check out my how to cook a brisket episode. Now I'm gonna throw it back on the pit. And there it shall sit for the next few hours until it comes up to a temperature of around 205 and it's feeling nice and tender. Hour nine on the dot since we put this thing on the pit and she is coming off. And this thing is looking beautiful. That crust, unbeatable. Plenty of juices down here in the foil boat keeping this thing nice and juicy. That smell, 
Unbelievable. I gotta admit though, this cooked way faster than I was anticipating. I thought all the extra water weight and cure would slow down the process, but this thing hit 165 degrees within the first four hours. Unbelievably fast. And at the time of pulling this, this is right around 200, 205, and it's been there for a while. I had to turn the temp down on the smoker a little bit for the last hour or so, because I didn't want it getting too hot, but I still wanted to get some extra smoke and bark on there. Just not used to briskets cooking this fast. One other thing to note though, is that this isn't gonna feel like your typical brisket, because whenever you cure meat with that pink salt, everything's gonna tighten up a little bit, and it's not gonna feel like your typical brisket. So if you're doing this at home for the first time and you're wondering, why isn't it tender? Why does it feel so tight? A lot of that is just due to the cure. So as long as you're hitting that internal temp right, holding it there long enough, and this pillowy fat on top is rendered, that's really what I'm looking for is that bark, you know you're in a good spot. That being said, you could rest this and slice into it right now, but just like any brisket, it's really gonna benefit from a super long rest. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pop this just like this on a rack into my oven at its lowest temperature, which is 170 degrees. That way all the fat can continue to render and the meat will get nice and juicy, all that connective tissue will really break down and we will end up with the perfect tender pastrami. Into the oven it goes overnight and I'll see you in one second. One overnight rest later, this thing is coming out of the oven and looking fantastic. Hoo hoo hoo. Oh yes please. That bark is looking fantastic. Feeling very tender. Top fat is nicely rendered. Smells amazing. I think this might be the first crunchy bark pastrami. Looking good. I think it's about time we sliced in. Just the tip. Beautiful red color, looking nice and tender. Oh, that smells so good. Just like a brisket, folks, against the grain. That's what we're talking about, folks. Looking good. Perfect amount of fat on there, nicely rendered, good strong bark. Definitely tender. Gotta love that crunchy bark on there. Nice and pink, that cure did its job. Ooh, I think it's time we give this a little bit of a taste test. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, it's so floral, so good. Let's see how the fatty side came out. Beautiful, nice, even penetration all the way through there. Nice and juicy, that fat is rendered perfectly. I mean, what more do you want? Let's get that burn end slice. Yes, please. Oh, it's so well cooked, love it. Mm-hmm. That's just a little nugget of happiness right there. Oh my God, yup. This is what life is all about, folks. Beautiful, fatty, nice and tender, super juicy. That bark though, unbeatable. <laughs> Do the old bend test that everyone likes so much. Yeah, that's tender. Holds up, pulls apart. Come on. Oh. Ooh. Cockburn! You gotta try this, dude. I've been waiting for this all week, buddy. I don't. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's like you're eating a brisket, but somewhere between like the deli meat and a brisket. Mm-hmm. It's got that nice sort of like firmness, but still tender. Mm. Oh, so good comes right apart. Yeah, a lot of people could just go for the lean when it comes to corned beef and pastrami. They're missing out though. Yeah, but like that, that fatty end. That fatty end is really what life is all about. Golly, that nice sort of hint of all those spices. Oh, I taste the cinnamon a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Those warming spices really shine through. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going heavy on the spicy brown today, boys. Oh, get some lean. I throw a big slice of fatty on top of there too. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That spicy brown, that's where it comes full circle. Kind of feels like that New York deli, but with mm. the Texas barbecue, little kick in the rear end. Dude, that rye bread mm -hmm. adds like just, that's the flavor that it was, that it was needing. That's what I'm talking about. By God, you've done it again. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is good, bud. Juicy. Could use something though. I was thinking that. Something sweet to kind of offset all that, that salt and, you know what I'm thinking? Hey, that's more like it, bud. Thank you. Cheers. Mm-hmm, mm. What do you think? Now that's refreshing. So what we're drinking here is an Irish whiskey daiquiri. You know, St. Paddy's Day coming up. Tullamore Dew, I have to say, is probably my favorite of the Irish whiskeys. Yeah, hard to go wrong. Daiquiri, super simple cocktail. It's literally just gonna be lime juice, simple syrup, so one part sugar, one part water. And then, of course, the Tullamore Dew. Mm-hmm, star of the show. Couldn't be simpler. It's usually done with rum, but 
I'm a whiskey man. Me too, me too. Come on. Usually it's served up like in a martini glass or a coupe or something like that, but I like to just put it over ice. This is essentially, you know, just a whiskey sour, except it's gonna be lime juice instead of lemon juice. Most people are gonna be using something like this, you know, like the store-bought sour mix, which, you know, it has its place in the world. You usually get it at bars when they, you know, squirt it out of the gun. But, you know, if you're making a cocktail at home, it's not hard to make some simple syrup. Just buy some lime, squeeze it in there, and it is a thousand percent better. This is the lighter fluid of the bartender world. So, Use it if you have to, but there's so many better ways. It's heartburn in a bottle. So this is a great little St. Patty's Day cocktail. It's delicious. And it couldn't be easier. And it pairs great with this heavy duty sandwich. Ooh. Your job's not that hard. <laughs> Neither is yours. <laughs> All right, John, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely mouth-watering pastrami. I know I say it in every video, but you really gotta give this one a try. It is so good. It's really not that hard to do, and the end result is spectacular. It's a great way to wow your friends or please your neighbors. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that subscribe button, ringing the bell, hitting the like button, all those things. I'll have exact amounts and ingredients in the description box of this video, as well as the recipe for Old Cockburn's cocktail here. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to let me know on Instagram, tag me at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Head over to ChudsBBQ.com for all pit inquiries, wait lists, and all that good stuff. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace! Carol!